It's like the, the worst fucking bar in the world. Like, How it's, why are you such cunts? There's shit just, bartenders as well. Reason, it's called hospitality. Be hospitable. Like that, it's in the fucking name, dude. It's so, <laughs> so bizarre. We're here back with Bar Talks. This is Stuart Hudson. He's been adequately named Holiday, which he has tattooed there. somewhere on his arm. And he is the uh, co-owner. Yeah. Co-owner of Bar Liba here in London, where I was so wonderfully allowed to walk around yesterday where he made all the drinks. Uh, <laughs> guest shifts are the best. Yes. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this one, this, this particular Bar Talk, is because Stuart's been around forever, as you can see by his highly sort of wrinkly, uh, scaly face. But this is the most time we actually got to spend outside of some ridiculous event where lots of alcohol are involved. Um, that being said though, I want to uh, give a shout out to Grand Marnier for sponsoring last night's guest shift, yeah. as well as uh, sponsoring this bar talk. Yeah, no, yeah, just, just quickly, right, so Stuart's worked in some of the most, uh, I, I would say iconic uh, bars in, in, in London. Yeah, I, I was lucky enough to work with some stunning venues and more importantly some stunning people yeah. um, that really yeah helped shape my career just jump right into it the sort of the not it's not the elephant in the room but it's the big one it's the milk and honey right yeah and we spoke a little bit about it yesterday but like how long were you there for what were you doing um, um so i was there for about two and a half years i started as as a junior bartender i was the, at the time the first person that was employed outside of the match group to go straight right. into milk and honey. That's um, crazy. And that was mainly because of, of the wine background I had as well, because they wanted to take a bit more of a central control of the wine for that venue. They had an outside consultant and they wanted someone in-house. I obviously had bartending experience and stuff yeah. like that, but yeah, it was. So, uh, milk and honey has some of these legendary stories of, of how hard it is to work there, the, the, the mental training that was involved. What I want to ask, are they true? Was it was there? Uh, there was like rumors, like somebody if they didn't pour in the right sequence, people would like get their fucking shakers knocked out. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. There's, a lot, I think a lot of it's kind of been hyped up. And yes, it was very hard, and yes, you were expected to do things in a certain way, but like knocking shakers down and stuff, it was, it, it was never brutal like that. It was no, no, that's not good enough. And you need to make that again. Right. Um, so like, we, yeah, like when I was there, there was a, a girl, Marie, she was the only person who was employed just to do the floor. She would never butt in. But she'd be on the pass on the ground floor going, no, that's the wrong garnish, you need to make that drink, yeah. She wouldn't take drinks out if they weren't to the level. Hardcore. Yeah. Um, Hardcore. Which was amazing because it, it weren't to get better and, and to try and always do the best you possibly could. Like getting told off for picking up an empty glass like that as opposed to the lowest possible point, which right. um, is something I still naturally do now. And, and I, I don't think it was a brute in, in any way a, a, a bad working bar. It was probably one of the best working environments I was, I've ever had, um, just because everyone wanted to get better. So we all drove each other to be better. And what were the years that you were there? Uh, so I started in mid 2005, so I had my interview, it was, a few days before my birthday, um, and then I got the call. Which is June 5th, now that we Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh. Uh, <laughs> opening day of our liver. Um, so but I, they offered me the job on my birthday, which was quite good. I was in Amsterdam at the time. Um, and then I, yeah, left just before Christmas in 2007. Right. Right, fair enough. Yeah. And well, what, were you still a junior? You weren't junior bartender at that point, I know. Uh, so when I left, I left as the head bartender at AGM. Cool. What is, we, we briefly touched on your tattoo. Where did the fucking holiday thing come um, from? So it, it independently started basically three jobs in a row um, without them knowing about it. So originally it was started by uh, Louis Louis Smith. Um, when we worked together at Mill. Um, and what, how it came about was that I liked to holiday. Um, I, that was one of the reasons I moved over here was to study and to travel. And I still like doing both of those things immensely. But um, if I can work out a, a better way to do things, I will. So I worked out that with all your two days off a week and your 21 or 25 holiday days a year, plus public holidays, you've got about 100 days off. So. Most people just take those as two days off a week and things like that. But I worked out that if you're working in a venue that 
is open seven days a week and you go, I'll take my two days off a week on a Saturday, Sunday, and then a Monday, Tuesday, and take one holiday a day, I've got a five day holiday. Now I do that 20 times, I suddenly have a, I, you get about 30% more holiday days off a year. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I would just constantly be away on five day holidays and just have one day, one, using one holiday day. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's so, all about maths, people. <laughs> you find a way to rig the system. Um, and when did you? So you're actually originally Australian. And when did you move to London again? So I moved to London in fifth uh, of March, two thousand and three. Two thousand and three. So mm. it's now twenty twenty one. Yeah. Twenty two. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's last two so years. Eighteen and a half. Oh no, it's just. Uh, <laughs> what year was that? <laughs> so it's been. It's been. It's just under twenty years now, right? Yeah. And like you've gone through generations and generations of of London bartenders, because like I, there's an argument that a generation comes every three years. So if it's been uh, 18 years now, you've lived through six generations of London bartenders. Yeah. And you're still behind the bar, <laughs> still making drinks. Um, yeah, now now it. it's your bar, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Um, For and a long, bar, the long period of so time. So is there I, like, because it's, it's, it's cool to talk to someone like you because a lot of people go, oh, how have things changed? And of course, salaries are super different. Fucking massively. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking what were you shit. saying? What were you on when you first moved? Oh, well, when, no, when I, well, like, yeah. when I started at Milk, I was on 5.50 an hour. 5.50 an hour. £5.50 yeah. an hour yeah. in 2005 as a junior bartender in Milk and Honey, London. Yeah. yeah. You guys are bitching. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are bitching. Uh, right now we're going through this weird fucking crisis of lack of staff and, and something yeah. along those lines. And I guess everyone's moved up onto higher positions and whatever. What do you think is happening to London with the issue with Brexit and the um, pandemic? Like, I, it just created a perfect storm it's, um, of A, a lot of people left the country just because, especially in hospitality, there was no, there was fuck all support. like. I, until a bit later on, so yeah, a, a lot of places just l cut staff out, or anyone that was kind of doing events and things like that, they didn't have furlough, and yeah. so you had a huge workforce that suddenly weren't, wasn't getting any support, had no potential for earning money, so they either m moved back to home or they started working in another field, um, and that yeah. has been, I think, the, the worst thing is because a lot of people suddenly went, oh shit. Well, I can earn more money doing not as stressful or not as late nights. Um, and I can have a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> the, guy, the guy that, that represented Great Britain in the Asia World Class this year wasn't working in a bar when he when he competed in the final. Are you serious? Yeah, and he's probably not coming back to the industry. Why? Because that's... he's like, what? I'm earning so much more money. I, like, why? I don't need to do that. That's like, crazy. Yeah, no one. <laughs> That's insane. Like, what, what are you <laughs> he came do? third, and he wasn't working in a bar. Well, we were speaking about that yesterday about wages, and basically you were, yeah. you were comparing that. You know, I think your, your, your other half was yeah. looking at jobs where people you can pay less per hour. Yeah, like and like doing treating people. Insane. Yeah, like she's doing kind of mental health stuff, and so yeah, like some of these stuff working in those fields are they for experienced people are at nine fifty an hour. And they're actually dealing and helping with other humans. Like, we're just fucking serving drinks and, 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 and bringing bag, food. And there's a bar bag job for 14 grand. Yeah, like London. you're seeing all of these things in the, and you get all these keyboard warriors going, how can you offer jobs for less than London living wage? And it's like, well, okay, we don't. We're all our, all our are on London living wage and above. But for event staff going, you should be offering at least 13, 15 pounds an hour. It's like, what, just fucking carrying plates. It's not that special, right? Especially when there's other jobs that are much more important to the social, to the community, and they're there on like nine, nine fifty, and so it's, it's, they're not getting tips. They're not getting all these yeah. other perks to boost that up. Well, what's that gonna do to the School of London? Because like, there's an element of mythology around it where London breeds the best hospitality professionals because of the stressful environment, but like the, the pressure creates diamonds sort of situation. Yeah. Um, and it will, it will come back. Like that's the thing, that, the natural thing is like, yeah, it's, it, we're still just really coming out of this now, out of this right. pandemic thing. 
Brexit, supply issues, all of that stuff, the right to work, that's all kind of working itself out. So next year, things will kind of pretty much return a bit more to normal. I don't think it'll ever be the same. I think a lot of people have learned a lot of lessons, both within and without the, and outside of the industry. So, but I do think the kind of massive vacuum of, of decent people will kind of ease itself out right. in the next six months. Years in the industry and being here from 20, 20, 2002, 2003. 2003, yeah. Yeah. Would you say there's been like, like, uh, not obviously not decades, but like different. What's the fucking right word in English? Jesus Christ, English is technically my first language. <laughs> different, not seasons, what are they called? Eras. Eras, like, is there different eras? Is um, there... I think so. Yeah, obviously there was like, the, when I first came over, there was a very small bartending scene, or like decent places, and then obviously the match group and lab and things like that. And so you saw cocktails starting to filter down below those into kind of what is secondary venues. Like now you can get fucking espresso martinis and weather spoons and yeah. stuff like that. And the drip effect of cocktails, which is all off kind of almost going back to say like Atlantic and Shea and those right. venues that were just before kind of, there was obviously, uh, in that era as well, there was a lot more emphasis on training. Training? I think bars themselves were, were investing in that. It's, whilst there still is training going on now, it's, it doesn't seem to be at the forefront of a lot of venues, and they'll try and farm it out either to brands to do, and which will have a more generic or more focus on a particular, their slant on things. Um, but, before, like both Lab and, and the Match Group, there's the, the two people are actually I would hold to a much higher regard because of your history. The real sort of, if you know what I mean, yeah. like they're never pretentious. They're fine. Yeah. They're just hardcore. Yeah. Where there's it's always the, the young kids that have come in in the first two years and they suddenly think that yeah. they they're on the top of the fucking world. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, just, just I don't know. Maybe I'm venting. That's no that because again that is something like to talk about different areas and stuff. It's something I thought the bar the our industry got rid of, which was this arrogance. Um, there's certain cities like, that fucking are full of arrogant bartenders. Berlin, I fucking hate going there. Don't it's, fucking it, get me started. Yeah, 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 yeah it's fucking Fucking Breck is the worst oh, bar Oh, I fucking want to kill those people. It's <laughs> <laughs> like the, the worst world. fucking bar in the world. I can't Howard's imagine the how you <laughs> fucking... <laughs> imagine me and Dean Cullen oh. in that venue. And they and Dean, oh. ask Dean about it. It is his worst bar experience Dean. of all. And it was only when they worked out that he was one of the judges. For tales that they're like, oh, do you want to see this? He's like, no, fuck that. They made me right. stand outside I got 10 rejected. minutes in the in I got the rejected rain. from that bar for years and years and years. And then I was randomly, and we got in there uh, on a random, I was randomly in, in Berlin, yeah. outside of ECB. Mm. We got in, and I was just like, why are you such cunts? Like, yeah. I, I can't think of any they're reason. They're shit bartenders as I can't well. Reason, I can't think of any reason why you would be so angry. Yeah. And so dickish to people. Like, yeah. like, what's happened in your life? Like. Your mom died and what, or some and shit, like, and you're It's called work. hospitality. Be hospitable. Like that, it's in the fucking name, dude. It's so, <laughs> so bizarre. So this is a... <laughs> turn into a fucking... Yeah, like, bar yeah. fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving that in there. Yeah, 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 fucking fuck do. Fuck. <laughs>